here, the first exit, is how you came in, front doors. Second exit is directly behind you. We have a bunch of glass doors that are all wide open, uh, so you could egress that way. We also have two more exits. One is through the tunnel, out that way, and out through the tunnel this way. Restrooms. We have restrooms back through the tunnel over on this side of the building, which is the northwest side of the building. And also, if during the ceremony, any of your kids or adults uh, begin crying or, or become upset, we do have an area to bring the children to, um, to calm them down. Um, that is through the tunnel back here uh, where the restrooms are, and there'll be a staff member back there to help you out uh, to bring your child to a place um, where they can calm down. Um, please remember throughout the ceremony to remain seated. There are people behind you who also like to see the ceremony. Uh, we do have a professional photographer here who will be taking pictures right here at the stage. And as the students process, um, they will be coming in from this direction, uh, from the south side down this aisle um, when we're going to be seating them. And then as the, after they receive their diplomas, they will be walking down this aisle all the way to the back of the college and then around the back and then back to their seats. So there are opportunities for you to catch photos um, from where you're at. So please don't block those behind you. Uh, so with that, I wanted to let you know, I hope you have a great time. Please feel tr free to cheer for everybody out there. Um, the ceremony will begin in about five minutes. Thank you.
Good morning, everyone. I'm Eric Eikenberry. I'm a member of the District Governing Board for Coconino Community College. Would you please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. I'm uh, pleased to introduce Brian Francis, uh, the Strengthening Indigenous Student Success Coordinator, to present the Land Acknowledgement Statement. Right? Jo ho yat e shik e shidene she ya Brian Francis da shidene ma e de shkijni e yanshne adot na jini e ya bashish chin ki ya ani e ya da shichi hona hende da shin na le ho Ako yat e to ohi he le besto ot le jinde shkijare yi si na shako Ako yat e to ohi he Good morning everyone my name is Brian Francis and uh, project coordinator for the Strengthening Indigenous Student Success Program here at Coconino Community College. It's a brand new program that is serving Native American students, so pretty excited about that. So I've been asked uh, about a month ago by Dr. Smith to uh, translate our land acknowledgement statement into our Diné language, into the Navajo language, and also just to say a few words. So instantly when I was asked, I was faced with two challenges. The first challenge is just to say a few words. Um, if you know Navajo people, it's hard just to say a few words. <laughs> and then second is to translate uh, the land acknowledgement statement into, our, into the Navajo language. And as I was thinking about that, you know, our, our language is a living and breathing being. Um, it's something that was given to us by the holy people that we have to this day. And it was used during World War II uh, by the code talkers during that time. So it's a special language in that sense. And the translation of that is always, uh, you know, as far as what's written down, it's always a bit tricky, but I'm going to do my best. And I'm thankful for the opportunity, Dr. Smith, for uh, having me up here to talk about this and also to present this in our language. And I look forward to hearing from other indigenous peoples across the state about how they feel about the land acknowledgement statement and what it means to them. I think it's a statement that we should bring out every semester and look at students for us to think about what does it mean to us as staff members, as faculty members, what does this mean to us and have a conversation around that. So, so thank you for that. So in my language, in our language, this is how it translates. Adon 
Thank you again um, for listening to that. And uh, if you understood that, and if you did not understand that, this is our land acknowledgement statement. And I want to acknowledge um, Derek Yellowhair, my brother, and my sister, Sonia Jones, for getting together with students to put this together a while back. And this is the first time in a live graduation that we're actually doing this, so thank you. So on behalf of Coconino Community College, we would like to express our gratitude and appreciation to the sacred land on which this educational institution resides. Sacred sites located within Coconino County include the San Francisco Peaks, Oak Creek Canyon, Sedona Red Rocks, the Colorado River, the Little Colorado River, the Colorado River Confluence, the Grand Canyon, and many more sites. This land has been inhabited by the Sanagua and Ancestral Puebloan people for thousands of years. Currently, the Zuni, Apache, Yavapai, Halapai, Havasupai, Paiute, Dene, Hopi, and many other Arizona tribal nations recognize this land as a significant spiritual place. This sacred land is enriched with indigenous history and culture, and it lives on to this day. We as a community with our CCC family and friends are very fortunate to live, work, and share this unique location. Thank you. People were asking if I had any advice for them today uh, who are up here on the platform. And I said, well, I think a good bit of advice for all of us would be to not fall down. And I will probably be the first one to do it, so. I'd like to welcome you to the commencement ceremonies at Coconino Community College. I have the um, great honor to have the best job in the entire world by serving our students and our colleagues all across the college as the president of this college. Today is a very special day for all of us and for different reasons for some of us. But I want you to know that this year marks our 30th anniversary of being a community college. Yeah, let's have some applause. Yeah. So it makes it even more special than we, uh, even though commencement's always very special. So I would like to now introduce the members of our platform party, and they're here to celebrate with us today. And please know, I do look at this as a celebration, and we do plan to celebrate. So I ask them to stand as I introduce them. We have three members of our district governing board here today. We have our vice chair of our board, Joseph Smith, Eric Eikenberry, trustee and veteran, and that's why we asked him to do the pledge. And Patricia Garcia, past chair of our board. Also joining us on the platform is Brian Francis, who you met a little bit earlier. Dr. Jamie Van Ness, executive vice president. Dr. Nate Sutherland, Provost and Chief Academic Officer. Dr. Gayla Stoner, Vice Provost and Dean for Online and Innovative Educational Initiatives at NAU. Cheryl Bloom, CCC Foundation President. And Tony Williams, Vice President of Student Services. I think many of you know that we would not be who we are as a community college without the support of our community. We are very grateful for all of the partnerships and the different kinds of support that our, our communities throughout Coconino County, because we're actually all of Coconino County, the larger community, 
And uh, we're so grateful for their support and their partnering with us. And uh, I, there are a few people here today. Uh, there were still people coming in and out when I had to go in the back. So I probably don't have names. But would everyone that is here, I know we have a member of the Flagstaff School District Board. Is that correct? Would you raise your, would you stand up for everyone? Yes, thank you. And we have a member from the Page School District Board. Is that correct? Thank you. So do we have any other guests here today that we could introduce? We got a lot of guests, but if I introduce all of you, they'll, you know, make me leave, so. Okay. Um, now I would like you to um, – sorry, I have to look at the script and see where we go next. So we've, we've, we've worked to uh, recognize them. We appreciate their partnership. Now, I have someone very important that I'd like us to recognize. Would our faculty senate president and American Sign Language faculty member, Sarah Benton, please stand. I am so grateful for the work that Sarah has done over the last two years in service to our students and all of our colleagues at the college. She has worked tirelessly to help be that bridge in communication so that we are communicating better and that we're understanding everyone's roles and what everyone has to do because you know, sometimes we have a few people that think maybe they work harder than anybody else, but what we find out is that everyone at this college works hard and uh, she has just been uh, so wonderful in getting us through these two years, as well as her efforts in helping everyone understand and be a part of our uh, HLC, Higher Learning Commission, uh, reaffirmation of accreditation, which the college was very successful in this year. So Sarah, I want to thank you, and I want to thank you personally um, for your support of me. It's, it's been amazing and very appreciated. Okay, now, I need to draw your attention to some really impressive and amazing people in the audience today. I would like all of our faculty full-time and part-time at Coconino Community College to please stand. And you need to stand for just a minute. I gotta talk about you. Some of you don't know the kind of time that they put in just in a regular semester and a regular teaching load. And yet over the past two years, they have exceeded that and far beyond when because of a worldwide pandemic, we had to switch everything, classes, services across the institution, everything uh, to virtual methods of instruction. And they've been amazing. And one of the things that I think is amazing, and part of it's because of, I value it and I hold it dear, is the support they have demonstrated to each other during this whole process. Um, they are committed to our students. They want to teach. That's why they're here teaching at Coconino Community College. That's what they want to do. They want to teach. They have uh, amazing passion for their disciplines and for ensuring that students are successful and that students uh, grasp the meaning and the passion behind why they care so much about their disciplines. They come from a variety of backgrounds and they have degrees from various universities across the nation. They have advised, coached, listened to your students. They've seen you at your best and maybe a few of you not at your best. And, uh, They've, they've got you in mind always, your goals, your dreams for the future, what it is that you want to do. And I think they always push, because I've watched and I've been fortunate to be able to go into some classrooms and observe our faculty, I think they always push our students to stretch just a bit more. And I'm grateful for that. That's something that's going to help all of us throughout our lives. So please know you are their priority. They are here for you all during the academic year, and they're here for you today, and they're proud to be here for you. Now, I would like all of our students to take 
just a moment to stand and face the faculty. And now I would like you to please share your appreciation through a vigorous applause. Thank you. You may be seated. Faculty, thank you so much. Okay, now we have really amazing, dedicated staff and administration here at the college. And we consider that every experience you have at Coconino Community College is a learning experience. We're all here to help support learning in different ways. We're here to support the students and the faculty in the whole idea of learning. And we know you learn things outside of the classroom as well as inside of the classroom. Now I know our staff are spread out all over the place because they're helping all over the place, but I would like our staff as much as possible to step forward into the light, raise your, stand up, step forward into the light. All of our staff who are here today, yes, and wave to everyone so that they can see. And they were here bright and early setting up for you, helping this happen. Okay, now I have a few things I need to talk to you about. And one thing that uh, you, you need to know, just because I need you to know it, um, is I will have the opportunity to be at our commencement this morning and this afternoon. And this will be the last two community college commencements that I will have the opportunity to attend. And that's after 41 years in the community college, attending commencement and celebrating our amazing students. So I decided that I'm gonna to speak to you a little more today than I normally do. Normally I'm trying to get you out of here because I know you wanna get out of here and celebrate with your families, so bear with me. Okay, ho hopefully college has been a time for you to discover and explore many of your passions. My wish for you today is that you will continue to discover and explore your passions throughout your lifetime and never stop. Have you ever been told that uh, school teachers often thought that young Einstein was dull-witted and moody and that he uh, wouldn't pay attention and they thought that maybe he was not really capable of learning? Well, in her book, Possessing Genius, Carolyn Abraham noted, along with what I just shared with you, the teachers thought he would never amount to anything because of the way he responded to them. And yet, she also states that certainly he had no difficulty concentrating when he chose to. So why do you think that is? Why do you think that some faculty, uh, evidently teachers, and I'm talking about when he was young, Einstein just thought, well, he, he must just not be very smart. Well, I think it's because at that time, he must not have found one of his many passions. And he did have many passions. And besides being this amazing scientist that we know about, he was a musician. And, and he talked about in a lot of the things when he would come up with ideas for his discoveries, what he would often see is images, not words, images. And, and a lot of things that are in the mind of an artist and a musician. So now I'm gonna tell you a little story. My husband and I started dating, it's gonna relate, okay. My husband and I started dating when we were freshmen in college. Now, I did discover a type of fashion, a passion at that time, but that's another story, okay. He was the only person in college who was even more underfunded than I was. Now that means he had less money, okay? And, and when you're college president, you learn to use terms like underfunded. So I don't tell anybody, Coconino it, Community College is a poor college and we don't have any money. I say, we are an underfunded college. And so now I've learned that's what I say about my college experience. Um, when I got there, I was the most underfunded college student that I met uh, until I met my husband. And since he was even more underfunded than I was, I think it was only right that I married him. We found 
in our college days and explored so many wonderful passions. We found that we were both passionate about the arts and how we learn about the world in which we live through art. We both found a deep connection between what it means to be human as we experience life through many different perspectives, both in our own art making as well as through the art of others. And we both determined early on in college that we wanted to share that experience and understanding of art with students. In other words, we wanted to be college university professors like some of those amazing professors that we were learning from in college um, <clears throat> and that were just uh, so inspiring to us about this whole world and all of the different things that were there for us to experience. And just like the amazing professors that I'm sure you have had while attending Coconino Community College and that you have had an opportunity to learn from, our professors made a big difference in our lives. Now, please know that all colleges and universities have some amazing, dynamic professors that we would all be fortunate to learn from. However, some also have a few professors that perhaps may not yet have found their passion. But what I want you to know, at Coconino Community College, all of our professors have found their passion. And that's why it is so wonderful to hear what our students learn from our professors. And all of the, the time our professors spend even outside of the classroom, uh, serving uh, our honor society, Phi Theta Kappa, developing the publication where students get their writing published maybe for the first time ever, um, different uh, science events that uh, our science faculty work with students on. These are all outside of their classroom and they do some amazing things. So I, I think you're fortunate and we're fortunate at CCC to have those professors who are very passionate. Well, as we were going through college, we also learned my husband uh, was very passionate about science and mathematics and his brain really works that way. While I found a passion for psychology and communication. And so even though I thought as an undergraduate in college that art making and serving as a university professor would be intertwined in everything I needed to know about understanding my passions. Luckily, I found that wasn't the whole story. Our passions become known to us in many different ways and forms over time. They continue to manifest themselves to us through this amazing adventure of life. So then 41 years ago, that's when I told you I've been working in community colleges a long time, uh, we moved to Wyoming and started teaching in a community college. I was working on my doctorate at the time and we both really wanted to be in or close to the mountains. Yeah, that's another passion and here we are, it's amazing. So um, we were sure that upon the completion of my dissertation that I was working on at the time, we would be making applications to teach at a university. But you know what happened instead? I discovered an incredible passion for the mission of the community college and for the students we serve. And I chose not to apply to teach at a university and I've never looked back and I've had the most wonderful opportunities to learn from our students as they bring many different uh, life experiences to college with them. So Einstein said, I have no special talent. I am only passionately curious. Well, I think that being passionately curious is a very special talent. And ultimately, as we all know, he used that special talent of curiosity to make amazing contributions to science and to the world in which we live. I don't believe finding your passion means that you know right now immediately the specific job that you want to do for the entire rest of your life. How wonderful it is instead that life is like a huge jigsaw puzzle and that we keep exploring and creating all along the way as we discover new passions that we never considered before. And with each new passion that we have discovered, 
we can determine how any one of them might guide us into an amazing lifetime of adventure and service to others. So, you know, I wanted to be a college professor, and I was, and I wanted to teach in the arts and had amazing experience. So, but what do you think the passion is that impacted the course of my life in a way that I became a community college president? I never, as a young person, thought, I want to be the president of a college. That was not my goal when I graduated from college. It was not my goal uh, for a long time in my teaching and as I was continuing to learn not only from students but from my colleagues who are so passionate. Well, early on, I had found a passion for the ensuring that people have the opportunity to understand what they need to know and why they need to know it. My mother tells me that at the age of four, when I could not get all of my siblings, who were all older than me and were already in school, and they all became attorneys and they're all very good at arguing, uh, it's their passion, not mine. <laughs> so she says when I could not get them to listen to me, I was known to pick up my rocking chair and try to hit them over the head with it so that they would listen to me. So because I had something really important that I thought they needed to know. So that was the first thing that helped prepare me to be a college president. When I was in the first grade, there were often times when I would climb up onto my desk and forcefully tell everyone in the class that specific things that I thought they needed to know. And now, I have a passion for ensuring that I help people understand what they need to know about the community college and specifically about Coconino Community College and why they need to know it. Because of this, I will talk to you incessantly about our amazing students and the amazing faculty and staff who choose to serve at community colleges. They're all very special. And since this is my speech, and uh, even though I don't have a desk to climb up on, I am now going to share with you five things that I think you really need to know, okay? Number one, Einstein said it is important to foster individuality for only the individual can produce new ideas. Colleen says to you, continue to find your unique passions throughout life and may they be many. Einstein said, this is number two, the value of a college education is not the learning of many facts but the training of the mind to think. Never stop questioning. This is what Colleen says, never stop questioning and seeking to understand your passions as you continue to learn more passions as you go through life. Einstein said, only a life lived for others is worthwhile. That one's very special to me. Things can change in a heartbeat as we have found during this pandemic. Open your eyes and your heart to all of your passions. Again, that's Colleen speaking to you especially those that encourage you to help others. Number four, Einstein said, our task must be to free ourselves from this prison by widening our circle of compassion to embrace all living creatures and the whole of nature in its beauty. Colleen says to you, define and create a new reality coming out of this pandemic, a new beginning. Get rid of old preconceived barriers and limitations so that you can embrace all living creatures and the whole of nature with compassion. And I think that's the special word with Einstein's thoughts. Finally, number five, the last one. The ideals which have guided my way and time after time have given me the energy to face life have been kindness, beauty, and truth. Do you know why Einstein said that? That's pretty wonderful. And what I say to you is please let kindness, beauty, and truth lead you as you go forward. We desperately need you to climb up on your virtual desks and tell everyone what you need them to know and understand about this world we live in. We desperately need you to share your truth with both passion, and compassion. So, okay, I have learned now that college presidents shouldn't throw chairs, so I, don't, I haven't thrown a chair in a long time. 
But, and so I don't want you to throw chairs, but I want you to live your passion every day. I want you to share your passion with those around you every day with compassion. So I'd like to ask you today to please take a deep breath. Your next adventure starts now. And know that coming out of this pandemic, we are absolutely counting on you to make this world a better place for all of us. So congratulations, okay? That's it. Okay, student, soon to be graduates, you need to tell me if that was too long. I tried to watch and see if anybody was falling asleep because the, the group that goes through commencements this afternoon has to listen to it too. And if it's too long, I gotta shorten it for them, okay? And now I would like to introduce Dr. Jamie Van Ness, our Executive Vice President, and she's going to explain a little bit about some of the student honors in some of the regalia that you see today. So, Jamie, please come forward. Thank you, and good morning. So we have three groups of honors that we would like to recognize this morning. The first group is our military veterans who are graduates. So we actually have five graduates this morning, this today that are military veterans, but unfortunately they were not here at this morning's ceremony. However, we would still like to honor them for their service, so please join me in thanking our graduate veterans for their service. Thank you. Next, you may notice many of the graduates wearing gold cords. These graduates have achieved academic honors with a grade point average of 3.4 or above. With those with gold cords, please stand and be recognized. Thank you so much, you may be seated. All right, and our final group that we would like to recognize this morning are our graduates who wear a gold stole over their shoulders. These graduates are members of the Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society, for which they have committed themselves to scholarship, leadership, service, and fellowship with the members of the Beta Gamma Chi chapter of the Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society. Please stand and be recognized. Thank you and congratulations on your accomplishments, especially during a pandemic. And now I would like to introduce Dr. Nathan Sutherland, our provost. It's a little sketchy not having any uh, handles on those stairs right there. so. We're doing good. Thank you, President Smith, for your comments and for your many years of service to us and to others like us throughout the years. Bienvenidos. <clears throat> Welcome. <laughs> We're glad that you're here. We know many of you have come from a long way away and look forward to celebrating your graduates. I am also grateful to work with a collection of really dedicated, passionate, and fun faculty. We have two that we would like to recognize today. These are the full-time faculty of the year and the part-time faculty of the year who have served with us throughout this year. I'd first like to introduce Michelle Metcalf. And Michelle, if you'll make your way up here while I'm bragging on you for a minute. <clears throat> Michelle has been teaching psychology at Coconino Community College since 1997. Full-time faculty of the year for 21-22. Wow, that was a sign. <laughs> Come on up. Michelle enjoys being part of students' educational journey as they pursue their goals, they hone their critical thinking, and they discover more about themselves and their abilities. She enjoys sending balloons into the air, and she is <laughs> well-loved by both her peers and her students. Michelle Metcalf. 
And President Smith is going to come up. We started a tradition uh, when I came here to really demonstrate how much we value our faculty. And what you need to know is that this award is brought about by students nominating their faculty, students who've had the opportunity to learn about that passion that our faculty have for their disciplines and for teaching and learning. And I think that is just the highest honor that we can have here, and I, and I so appreciate uh, our faculty. So uh, the new tradition that we started at that time was that we would place a medallion for Coconino Community College on the faculty member uh, who was selected as Outstanding Faculty Member of the Year. And it is not to take away from all of our other outstanding faculty, because I know we do have them, but it is to demonstrate to all of you, all of our faculty, to all of our students and our audience members, how much we value and appreciate our faculty. I have a special appreciation for you, Michelle, because I think that you're a bridge builder. And I think that helps all of us working together. And I think it really uh, especially helped us during the pandemic. You know, we were angry a lot of times. And why was that? It's because we didn't know what to expect. And things were being forced upon us and, and we, we had no power to control this pandemic that was impacting our families and, and our coworkers. And yeah, that, that's pretty upsetting. But through all of this, Michelle, uh, stayed her very kind nature and helped us all through it. So besides being a wonderful teacher, I think you're a wonderful bridge builder. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Sorry. How's that? Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Smith. Need to pull that down. <laughs> Um, thank you so much, Dr. Smith and Dr. Sutherland. Um, I'm just very humbled um, by your words. Thank you. Uh, it is my honor today to speak to this incredible student body. It's a pleasure to welcome um, students, families, um, faculty, and staff. And it's been a while since we celebrated graduation in person. And it's extra special that this momentous occasion occurs and coincides with CCC's 30th birthday. As I'm looking at you all, I know that you've come from so many different backgrounds and life experiences. Many of you are first generation college students. Some of you are veterans. And many of us have experienced hardships. Um, this may be physical, emotional, psychological, and financial. And, of course, we had the re-entry back to in-person classes. Um, as students, you made the decision to pursue your education at Coconino Community College, and you made sacrifices of time and money. You set examples for others, children, family, coworkers, and friends. And you enhanced valuable skills, critical thinking skills, time management, life balance, resiliency, and personal responsibility. Your perseverance, grit, determination, and resiliency have brought you here to this moment of celebration for accomplishing your academic goals. It hasn't been easy, but most things that are worthwhile aren't easy. Regardless of our struggles, though, we persevere. During these past few years, we've learned a lot. You've learned about your area of study, about yourselves, about community, and about investing in your future, which is our future. We learned that we need to reach out for help and reach in to help others. We don't stand alone. We need each other. As soon-to-be graduates, you sit among those who supported you, family and friends who knew you could accomplish your goal, your and your CCC community, facilities, security, and IT who provided the physical and digital safe space for us, 
leadership who navigated through uncharted waters these past couple of years, and staff who have helped in registration, financial aid, uh, advising, sometimes a shoulder to cry on or to you know, help boost you up. And many staff who are behind the scenes that make everything work. Faculty who've encouraged you, shaped you, challenged you, and perhaps even frustrated you, but who always believed in you. We are all here now to celebrate your accomplishments. Now, not only have you achieved your educational goal, you've learned life lessons that you'll take with you. Hard work and sacrifice pay off. Find your passion and pursue it. Hold yourself with integrity. Never forget where you came from. Treat others with compassion and respect. You don't know their history. Make time for each other. And ultimately, it's the connections we make, whether lifelong or brief, that are important. We need each other. As you go forth and continue your, to pursue your goals, draw, along, draw upon the lessons you've learned along the way. Remember, to be here, you had to make a choice among the many paths facing you. And that choice was to take responsibility for your place in the world, which ultimately leads to a better world for all of us. You are on the path to great things. Congratulations. Thank you, Michelle. You can see why we uh, love having Michelle here at Coconino Community College. How many students had Michelle as an instructor? Just by raise of hands. Let's let's give Michelle a round of applause. <laughs> I'm also delighted to announce this year's Outstanding Part-Time Faculty of the Year. Unfortunately, due to some family circumstances, she wasn't able to join us today, but Darrell Meyer has been working at Coconino Community College since 2018, teaching math and statistics. As Part-Time Faculty of the Year for this year, Darrell finds it a worthy challenge to take students on a journey to understand how much of what they do in the real world revolves around math. All right, now raise your hands. How many of you want your world to revolve around math? <laughs> All right, we got a few back there. I teach statistics, so I, my, my world revolves around that a little bit. I uh, wanted to, to congratulate Darrell and uh, appreciate her for the work that she's done. So a round of applause for Darrell Meyer. Now, before I turn this over uh, real quickly, I noticed that many of you are wearing items that have been given to you by your family. Uh, what we do here today is a family effort, not just an individual effort. The lei that I wear was given to me by members of my wife's family who are Polynesian. I've had a lot of people asking me about this. This is a special memory of my graduation when I finally finished school 12 years ago. So take a moment to remember today to cement in your mind the things that make life important, your family, your friends, and your ability to move forward in this great country. Next, I would like to introduce Tony Williams, our Vice President of Student Services. Thank you, Dr. Sutherland. Good morning, graduates. It's an honor to be up here in front of you today. Find my space here, oh, here we go. Uh, now it is my pleasure to introduce the class of 2022 student address speaker. Wrong page. This is the first time I've been through an in-person graduation here, I apologize. Uh, Let me start over. It is with great pleasure that I introduce the class of 2022 student address speaker, Megan 
Belmares. Megan graduated from NAU, you can start coming up, graduated from NAU in 2018 with a bachelor's degree in chemistry and landed a career in Flagstaff in her field of study. In 2020, she returned to CCC to retake a class in American Sign Language that she had withdrawn from previously. The class led to a rekindled interest in ASL, and she pursued a certificate in ASL in interpreting studies. Please welcome Megan Belmares. Thank you, Vice President Tony Williams. Welcome family and friends for being here today to celebrate the graduates past and current that are before me. My name is Megan Balmaris, and it's amazing to be here with you all since these last two years are not exactly what we have expected. Some of us had to switch to online classes halfway through, while others may have spent their whole time online starting school in 2020. But I can say that whichever path we had to take, we did it, and we are here today to celebrate our achievements. My journey at CCC began back in 2016. I was bartending right after graduating from NAU. A coworker of mine knew sign language and that made me wanna learn thinking, that looked pretty cool. So I signed up for ASL 101 here at CCC, but halfway through I had to withdraw. I had found a job within my field of study and unfortunately there was a conflict with class time and work hours. I remember emailing my teacher at that time telling her I won't be attending anymore. She wished me luck and hoped that I could try again in the future. Four years later, I had the opportunity to take that ASL class again. I was able to find a class that didn't require me to be on Zoom at a specific time. While this class was great for me time-wise, you tend to find out real quickly the only way to really improve and learn sign language is to be able to practice with someone. I knew I needed to practice with someone that could give me feedback. That is when I met Alan Cartwright. He was one of the language mentors students were able to reach out to. After one session with him, I kept signing up for tutoring sessions each week to keep learning and to keep talking with him because of how he would teach and help students. It was engaging and enthusiastic, and it made me want to keep learning more. I found out he would be teaching the next level of ASL, and his wife, Daisy, would be teaching a class based around deaf culture that same semester. So I signed up for both classes because to me, it made sense. I learned a lot during those first two semesters about the language and culture, and I couldn't help but be engaged with it. So I decided to talk with my advisor and see if I could get signed up for the American Sign Language and Interpreting Studies Certificate here. I was soon signed up, but had to look at what classes were next to take. Now in my mind, one or two classes at a time is doable. I'm working full time, planning a wedding with my fiance, other commitments going on, so with a couple of credits taken here and there, I would hopefully be done in another couple years. There was no rush for me at all. Well, then I talked to Sarah Benton about these classes, one of the ASL faculty members. Turns out, I was very wrong in my assumption. Based on class availability, I would have to be a full-time student for the upcoming fall and spring semester to fulfill their certificate requirements. So I thanked her and talked to my partner that night about it. Can I do this? Can I take on a full school schedule while working full time? And we both agreed it would be a now or never moment. I didn't want to lose momentum. I knew if I waited for those classes to be available again in two years, I couldn't guarantee that I would actually take them. This last year, I have learned so much more about the language, the culture, and even more about myself. With all of this excitement came its challenges. Lots of early mornings, a lot of late nights, tears of frustration followed by comfort from my fiance and a pint of Ben and Jerry's. It took a toll on me, wondering why did I do this? I didn't need to do this. And that's when I realized I had one of two decisions. I could withdraw from my classes again and say, oh well, gave it another shot and it didn't work out. Or I could pick myself up and keep going. I had gotten this far already, why not go a little further? I knew this is what I wanted to work towards. I had the support from my family, my friends, instructors, and the school, but I needed to put in that work. I had to be the one to keep telling myself I can do this. And that is why I'm here today, finishing something I didn't think was possible two years ago. What started as a simple interest in learning a new language turned into new friends, new appreciation, and new opportunities. For one example, I was accepted as a volunteer this summer for the DeafBlind Retreat of Arizona down in Phoenix. I'll be able to meet more people, learn more about the community, 
and continue to expand my knowledge to hopefully bring more awareness to others. I want to thank my partner and my friends and family for being so supportive and encouraging through this journey. To my instructors for putting in the time to make sure we were getting the information we needed and challenging us to expand outside our comfort zone. To the ASL students that are graduating with me today and the ones continuing classes next year, thank you for making classes fun and interactive. To two of my teachers, Daisy and Alan, I've learned so much from you in the last two years. From all that you've learned, all of your encouragement, your storytelling, and it's important that I've learned this language and culture, and I'm really excited to share it with other people. Thank you so much. <laughs> Finally, to my fellow graduates, you've chosen that second path to keep going and are here with me today. And I am so proud of all of you. Whatever your journey looked like, you have made today happen. I hope you remember this feeling of accomplishment and that you continue to choose that path that keeps you going because I know you will go out and do some amazing things. Congrats to all the graduates that are here today. It's now time to celebrate. <laughs> Thank you, Megan. Uh, if you get a chance, uh, anyone who sees her after graduation, uh, take a look at her mortarboard. It says, I talk with my hands. Now it is my pleasure to introduce our second class of 2022 student address speaker, Natalie Rodriguez. <laughs> Natalie was born and raised in Los Angeles. She moved to Arizona in search of a great school with amazing professors and found them both at CCC. A CCC to NAU student, Rodriguez is a psychology major minoring in anthropology. After she completes her studies here at CCC, she plans on pursuing her bachelor's degree in anthropology at NAU. Please welcome Natalie Rodriguez. Hi everyone, this is a little bit of a surprise for my family. They didn't know I was speaking today and I am a little bit nervous. So let's go ahead. Bienvenidos a todos. It is my pleasure to welcome students, families, faculty and staff to CCC's first commencement in person since the pandemic. As Vice President Tony Williams mentioned, my name is Natalie Rodriguez and I am 21 years young I'm from the beautiful city of Los Angeles, and I moved to Flagstaff in hopes to find a home away from home, and I found Coconino Community College. I went to California High School. I got my first job at 16. I became a CNA and also certified as a lifeguard at the age of 17. I moved seven hours away to focus on my future and today I graduate with my AA in Arts and Sciences. Thanks to CCC, I will be headed to NAU next semester to further my education in psychology and anthropology. Growing out of the environment that I was raised in, I can truly say that I'm proud of myself. I was born and raised in a Honduran household with two amazing hardworking parents and four siblings. Give me a second, sorry. From the age of six to 13, I was surrounded by drugs, alcohol, and gangs. I was really afraid of what my future would hold, being surrounded in an environment like that. Education was something that my family and my parents especially encouraged in my household but college didn't feel like an option for me, and it didn't feel affordable. Thankfully, my parents set really high standards for their children, showing us strength and giving us motivation. 
They love and support my siblings and I to avoid us from falling into the system that LA has set up for all of their low-income families. My parents were both born in Honduras, having hardly anything. My dad worked from five in the morning to very late at night for the past 20 years. And my mom has been the best full-time mother while managing to work for my siblings and I to show us that she works the low-income paying jobs so I don't have to. My parents came to this country seeking for a better life and better opportunities. I couldn't be more grateful for the work that they've put into this life of mine in order for me to have the opportunities that I do. I want to thank CCC for everything they've offered me. CCC has given me the best opportunities in the world, such as allowing me to be part of their CCC to NAU program, which, by the way, has the best counselors and the best support. <laughs> Along with the great position as a student worker at the HR department that I'm actually really grateful for, looking at my coworkers sitting with my family makes me really happy. Also amazing staff that welcome me every day. Walk in, look at security, makes me happy. <laughs> As I emerge into my adulthood, I want to thank my professors, including Anna Hammerly, for teaching me that sharing my feelings through writing is important and relieving. Lisa Doskosel, for teaching me that culture is everywhere and to never be ashamed of who I am. And Carl Cook, who taught me and my peers that one person can make a difference in this world and that it's never too, too late to travel <laughs> and to live life young. Secondly, again, I wanted to thank my parents because without them, I would not be here. Your sacrifice is not overlooked. Dad, mom, los quiero mucho. Gracias por todo lo que hacen por mí. Gracias por todo lo que han hecho por todos nosotros. Su sacrificio aquí está. Los amo. I'm thankful for my girlfriend. She's been the greatest help in my life, and she's helped me become who I really am. She's also given me a second family that cares for me and supports me. Being Latina and a first generation student, being wor raised in the worst parts of LA, as well as being part of the LGBTQ plus community, graduating college is a great accomplishment for me. I'll leave you guys all with this note. You are the future, you, all of the graduates standing in front of me. You can make a difference, and you choose your own rite of passage. Congratulations, thank you. Thank you, Megan and Natalie. That's why we do what we do, and that is my favorite part of commencement. I wish I could hear all of your stories. They really are amazing, and you are the ones that are going to bring us out of this pandemic so that we can find our passions and treat our world that we live in with compassion. Okay, Vice Chair Smith, would you please join me at the podium? <laughs> and will those graduating today please stand? <laughs> District Governing Board, dignitaries, faculty, staff, and guests, I'm honored to present to you the Coconino Community College graduates participating in commencement today. All degrees and certificates conferred today are awarded with the understanding that the final academic and administrative requirements as determined by the district governing board 
have been met. Students, please remain standing. Graduates, by the authority vested in the District Governing Board of Coconino Community College, by the laws of the State of Arizona, and with the understanding that each of you has completed all the requirements of your respective programs as set forth by the faculty, I hereby confer on each of you the appropriate degree or certificate with all rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Please present yourself at the platform to receive your degree. I would like to let you know that if you prefer not to shake hands, we totally understand and we want to honor whatever you are comfortable with at this time. So if you walk up and somebody tries to shake your hand, just do this and we'll do this back and we'll congratulate you, okay? So thank you for coming forward. Board members, if you would like to join uh, Joey down here, you do not have to, especially those of you with a cane. Uh, but if you would like to, uh, then you can also help to congratulate the graduates. And now, what we've been waiting for. Megan Belnamaris. <laughs> Natalie Rodriguez. Brittany BK. Alima Damgard. Gerlara Vaughn. Michaela Doogie. Nancy Crosby. Crosby. Davida Lee. Jobin Gray Mountain. Sarah Haven. Kaylee Scheller. Kristen Brown. Siobhan Badoni. Valencia Garcia. Megan Turner. Alexander Kerfoot. Kelly Thompson. <laughs> Rhiannon Eldridge. Krista Many Mules. Emily Slivers. Kimberly Tsini. Tamara Robbins. Ashley Hale. Shelby Lane. Lucas Stratton. Gwen Cleveland. Sarah Garcia. Sarah, 
Zachary Brown. Victor Mann. Ashley Kirkpatrick. Michelle Romero. Haley Majo. Kiera Benavides. <laughs> Stephanie Dan. Cassiana Lowe. <laughs> Olivia Duncan. Carrie Begay. Adam Diaz. Caitlin Petri. Carlos Ramos. Jordan Chavez. <laughs> Jenna Varela. <laughs> Sean Rush. <laughs> Mia Cordero. Kalani Honani. <laughs> Angela Gordonis. <laughs> Dana Avitya. Damian Pacheco. Matthew Hayward. Arion Farnsworth. Petra Johnson. Abigail Almanza. <laughs> Serenity Rodriguez. Great. Great. We need you. Adrienne Bigay. Stella Andrade. Simisha Key. Okay. Monica So. Elian Reese. Aaron.
Lauren Begay. Sarah Zygo. Valencia Weaver. Lacey Nez. Kenneth Dodson. Kiana Omi. Michael Diaz. Andrea Clayton. I get to do the most fun part. Not only do I get to shake their hands, but I get to see in their eyes. I get to see, you know, um, they're gonna take, they're gonna take care of this world. They're gonna do better than we've done. And uh, uh, as you know, we're community college. We have students of all different ages and all different life experiences. And so, I know I'm a little bit self-indulgent, but I try to take the time as students come across to ask them what's next, because we want to encourage them always in this next adventure that's coming up. So now, the moment that we have all been waiting for, our graduates, would you please rise? Yeah. Yeah. And you may take your tassels and turn them from right to left. This is an amazing honor and it's um and it's because you have worked so hard. Okay, that's why you have that opportunity to move that tassel and to be one of our graduates. Next, I would like, oh, you may see it, thank you. <laughs> Next, I would like to introduce Dr. Gayla Stoner. She's from NAU, Vice President and Dean for Online and Innovative Educational Initiatives. And she's going to provide a congratulations for all of us on behalf of NAU. Thank you, President Smith. Good morning. On behalf of President Cruz Rivera and all of Northern Arizona University, I am truly honored to welcome the members of those graduating today and the families, friends, and fellow students who have gathered at this commencement ceremony. Today is an important day to celebrate your pursuit of knowledge and individual achievements as you are awarded for your commitment to education. I hope that each of you know that your CCC experience has well prepared you for the next chapter of your lives, whether that be launching a new career or continuing your advanced educational pathway. And if I may add, Natalie and others headed to NAU, I look forward to supporting your future success. 
Again, it is a very special day and deserving of great celebration. My serious congratulations to all. Thank you. And now I would like to introduce Cheryl Bloom. Cheryl is a very special person that supports all of Coconino Community College in really amazing ways. She is currently serves as the president of our foundation board. So now that you are alumni of Coconino Community College, she'll talk to you about that. But what's really amazing is how much time she gives in support of students, in support of raising money for scholarships, um, uh, and she she just does it because she doesn't get paid to do this and uh, so please help me welcome Cheryl thank you hello everyone wow I feel so grateful to be a part of this magical moment um, and I want to thank you all for creating such an amazing family Yes, when I come in here to our CCC campuses and I see the photos and the stories that are displayed here, um, they remind me of family photos that you see in our homes. And these pictures and the stories attached to them represent a unique group connected by a passion for learning. And over the years, you could say that I've been introduced to a lot of CCC family members. I've served as a scholarship committee member for more than 20 years. Well, I was really just 14 when I joined. Um, but this committee, along with a lot of other local donors, work hard to see that students have the tools and the resources they need to be successful. And by the way, if you like to see others reach their potential, then I invite you to join and explore opportunities to join our alumni or our scholarship committees. The foundation staff can provide you with details and the criteria, but I'm pretty sure you have to at least be 14. <laughs> okay. Um, you might ask, why did I choose to be a volunteer with CCC? Well, my family believed in lifelong learning and the value of higher education. And also, I was kind of secretly hoping I could get like an honorary award or something. But just kidding, President Smith. No, really. Um, but seriously, the real reason that I'm here is you. Reading your stories on the walls here and in our newsletters, um, it inspires me. And your graduation today is likely to set an example for those who follow, as you'll inspire others to pursue their dreams as well. I'd like to share just a couple of quotes from students that I've had the privilege of reading. From Sarah, throughout my life I've witnessed the effects of poverty, drug addiction, and domestic violence on myself, my family, and friends. Now I'm happily succeeding in higher education after struggling for two long years. I found my passion and my dreams again, and I'm attaining them through Coconino Community College. From Ben, I've chosen to get a degree in CCC's fire science because I want to help my community thrive and be next to my neighbors when they need me the most. From Josh, I have so much to learn from Coconino Community College and I'm grateful for the opportunity to attend classes here. I take much pride in what I do and what I've learned both in the classroom and outside of the classroom, within my community and from the older generations of great people. I'm pretty sure he was talking about me there. <laughs> These students, as well as our graduating students today, new alumni, say it all. And I understand that some of you will be continuing your education. So how many of you plan to do that? Raise your hands. Oh my gosh, awesome. Be sure to take a moment today to consider those who've supported your dream from your parents, your friends, your partners along the way. Um, Red Bull, Google, whatever. <laughs> to the donors, to the faculty members who you knew well, and maybe to staff and volunteers you may never have ever met. All of us are proud to have supported your dream. 
You're here today because somebody gave you strength and your gratitude means a lot to them. And give yourself a big hug for overcoming obstacles, including a pandemic, and believing in yourself and achieving your goals. Way to go. I know your loved ones are extremely proud of you. I can see it in their faces out there. And in my professional opinion, this would be a most opportune time to ask them for money. Okay. <laughs> Wherever your life journey takes you next, I ask you to remember your family here at CCC. We're all part of the dreams you have for yourself, for your family, and for your community. And as you go out and change the world, remember your family and make community a priority. Because here's what I think really matters, the health and well-being of our loved ones, the resilience of our communities, and kindness. And we can't do that without each other. And for your stories, we'll keep them coming. We want to stay connected with you and your continued success. Carry your pride with you always. And I want you to know that we'll forever be a part of your Comet family here. Again, thank you for the honor of being with you today. I'm proud of you. And graduates, my warmest congratulations to you. The world is yours now, and we cannot wait to see what you make of it. I, I did get an award. I did. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. And I think we should, like, knight her or something. Uh, but yes, we want her to be part of the Coconino Community College family for life. So thank you so, so very much. If you've listened carefully, there's been a theme that's gone throughout today. And uh, Cheryl really helped bring that forward. And it has to do with the encouragement of our families, our friends, our coworkers, sometimes it's our children, sometimes it's our parents or grandparents. All of you who in some way have been supportive of one of the graduates here today, whether you know, you're a spouse and maybe you've been cooking dinner every night for how long so they can study, whether it's uh, a child and you're uh, helping um, pick up the house or whatever, whether you're a parent and you have done everything you can to encourage your child and maybe helped along the way a little bit financially, no matter what, anyone here who has supported one of these graduates in some way, and maybe it's just with saying, you can do this, I know you can, would you please stand, all of you. Everybody here that is here to support one of our graduates today, please stand. Now you gotta stay there just for a minute. No, you gotta stay standing just for a minute. Sorry. Okay, graduates, you stand and give them a vigorous applause. Turn and face them. Look at that, yeah. Okay, before we, you may sit down, before we close, I would like to express my thanks, my very deep, sincere thanks, to all of our staff and faculty who've worked so hard to make this a special uh, occasion for all of us. I'm very grateful. I would also like to give you um, a special thank to our speakers. Um, our, our Michelle, our faculty speaker, our student speakers, um, Cheryl with the foundation. Uh, there were heartfelt words and they mean so much to all of us. I would like to thank Terry Allen for the gift of his music, our guitarist who sang and played music for us today. And I'd like to give a very special thank you to Stacy Anderson and Kelly Figuero. It's okay, sort of, for signing for us during the ceremony today. And yes, yes. 
And you know, um, not only is that another language, but it's also truly an art. And I am so grateful that they shared that with us today. And we have a special photographer. It's, he's from Sean Openshaw Photography. We thank him and you will be able to get copies of photos. Families, you may meet your graduates outside in the front of the building after the ceremony. We ask the full audience to please stay seated until the platform um, party has left, the dignitaries, the faculty, and all the graduates. And they're going to be going out this way, and then all of our audience may exit this way, and your students will meet you out front. Not students, graduates. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, we're going to... Um, leave and just really start this next adventure in your life. So this isn't the end of anything. This is just the start of something new. So graduates, faculty, staff, family, friends, let's make this day and every day going forward the best day of your life. Congratulations. <laughs>